Another distraction. I should have become a mage. Mages can cast spells to be rid of sand, can't they? That's your new way of saying you're tired.
I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes, but peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimmon is far tighter than it appears. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimmon workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti so, workers worse I recently than traveled past Two Moons Temple. I hate to say it, but I think the monks there are the What makes you say that? It's that building over there. For most of Rimmon's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. The Rimin Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath... It's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimmon Marketplace.
take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets? Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls? When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimen, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. I know you. I saw you through the soul shriven's eyes. You were with the fool who thinks himself the shiny knight of Sirad. If only he knew what a monster I was. The horrors of Cold Harbor pale before my heinous deeds. I am my own head, yes. I am the hero of Sirad and the villain of Elsewhere. The champion of the third Nedic massacre and the dark knight they call the Betrayer. Of course not, I am the genuine article, much more real than a disembodied soul given shape in the flesh cauldrons of oblivion. But why do you presume to talk to me? I have killed greater beings than you for much, much less. Came to that conclusion by yourself, did you? <laughs> That's what they caught me. There's a certain ring to it, but I always preferred my more grandiose titles. Champion, Slayer, Dark Knight. When I am made whole, the cats will pay for what they did to me. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. 
Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Yaraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The Betrayer saw you when it looked through the Soul Shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the Dark Knight that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Eurexia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now about the rest of my body, oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Tharn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half-brother, your arrival, it's so... unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen... Hush, isn't... Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Oh, how precious. I hoped my pompous half-brother would provide an amusement, but this is even better! I have a chamber set aside in the dungeons just for you. We'll play the most interesting games, you and I. Until your body gives out. Do not presume to lecture me. I make the rules here, not you or Abner. I have a special relationship with Mulan Mir, an understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my half-brother can do to stop them. Enough! Zumog Foom, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. So we wound up down here, in the palace sewer. 
We heard two things of note. First, your Axian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold. Finally, I can't abide another moment in this stench.
Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adaptorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted, well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Re. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adaptorium. Adeptorium serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts are dedicated to the Jean Kaj, literally the Order of the Desert Wind. Note that it has numerous entrances in case the main door is blocked. The Rimmin Bank is an honorable institution. And you sat to death. When the sixteen kingdoms were only sixteen tribes.
Someone stop that thief! You don't move until you've paid the fine! You're dead! What makes this one sick? 